What's up everybody? You are here with the Fly Guy. Today we are going to be working on attaching a single monofilament weed guard to our flies. This is really helpful when we're fishing for largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, or northern pike uh, in environments that have a lot of weeds, there are a, a lot of lily pads, or uh, a lot of stumps and debris in the water, and we know those fish are holding to that structure. You can attach weed guards to a lot of different types of flies. You can attach them to, you know, poppers and topwater flies, streamers, and jig flies. It's really easy to do. It doesn't take a lot of materials, and it's pretty quick. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to start by attaching a fairly generous amount of thread to our hook. When we're attaching thread to our hook, we want to make sure that we are laying a consistent base down and we're going to wrap back all the way to the back of the bend and we're going to wrap about halfway down the bend of the hook. I highly recommend using mono tying thread because it takes super glue really well and it will help bite into the mono weed guard as you're wrapping it down to ensure that it doesn't pull out. Throw in a few half hitches to make sure that you don't lose your work, and let's go ahead and cut our mono. The monofilament that I use for all my weed guards is a 20 pound mono. What you want to do is you want to cut the length of your mono to three times the length of the hook shank. That ensures that you have enough to complete the weed guard when you're done with your fly. As you're wrapping your piece of mono down, make sure that it is on top of the hook shank and that it is centered. Use your fingers on your opposite hand to guide the mono and keep it in the center of the hook shank. Some people flatten the mono to make it more easily uh, attached to the hook. I don't do that because I don't like to compromise the mono that I'm attaching to the hook and I like to keep it intact. I feel that if you flatten the mono too hard, there's a tendency that it could possibly break and become damaged later on down the line. But this is just personal preference. If you want to go ahead and do this, you can do that before you wrap it down. I find that if I just use my fingers to guide the mono down the back of the hook shank, it works just fine. Make sure that when you're wrapping your mono down, that you use enough tension to get a good bite into that mono. When you're finished, throw in a few half hitches, grab your super glue, and coat those thread wraps with a generous amount of super glue. This is going to make your wraps permanent and it's going to make sure that that mono weed guard does not pull out. Also when you're done, you should see that your weed guard actually hangs off the back of the hook so that it is ready to be pulled forward when you're finished with your fly. After your super glue is dried, your fly is ready to tie like normal and you'll finish the weed guard after your fly is completely done. Now that you're almost completely done with your fly, you'll feed the tip end of that weed guard through your vise and loop it up around the base of the hook towards the hook eye. Make sure that you leave enough material so that there's a loop below the hook when you're finished. You don't want it to be too tight. You'll then feed the tip of the weed guard through the hook eye and this will ensure that when you start wrapping it that it stays fairly straight directly behind the center of the hook eye so that it is lined up with the hook point. After making some securing wraps and tightening it down, go ahead and feed that tip down back through that hook eye and cut it off. Make sure to start your securing thread wraps towards the back of the thread head. This will ensure that you'll have space to cut off the tip of the weed guard in the end. You don't want it to be on the inside of the hook eye. This could interfere with your knot as you're fishing whatever fly you're tying. This pattern that I'm tying a weed guard on here is a marabou sunfish pattern and obviously bass eat bluegill uh, and sunfish. So a lot of times I'm throwing this fly in and around lily pads and weed lines uh, alongside stumps and down trees where bluegill like to congregate and the bass follow. Regardless of how you finish the head of your fly, whether you use UV resin or fabric paint like I do, it is only going to reinforce and keep that weed guard from being damaged and pulled out. If there's one recommendation that I could give you on attaching mono weed guards to your flies, it would be to not go any heavier than 20 pound mono for this style of weed guard. If you start to use heavier monofilament, yes, the fly will become weedless, but because of its stiffness, it could also become fishless. 
So you have to find a happy medium where you can have a pound test of mono that keeps the majority of the weeds off of your hook, but yet still allows that line to shift to the side as you set the hook. Because you don't want to have a weedless fly that doesn't catch you anything. It defeats the purpose. I hope this helped you start to get an idea about how to attach a single weed guard to your fly. If this video helped you and you liked it, go ahead and hit thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for new content. Thanks again for watching everybody. Take care and we'll catch you next time.